Awesome. Well, first and foremost, I'd like to uh, thank you uh, for coming on to the show. I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, no doubt, man. Yeah, so now you're in 2022, bodybuilding overall, you know, NPC Nationals champ. How's that sound? Yeah. Uh, it feels good. I feel like I'm a little accomplished, but then again, it don't feel like it's stumped yet. I feel like I don't feel like I stumped it yet. So yeah. I'm going to do a pro show or something like that, but yeah, I don't feel like it's stumped. <laughs> How how did um like how did you feel being on stage? Did you feel like you had it like you know kind of already you know you were in there, or did you think that you know you weren't sure if you're gonna you know win your class, win the win the overall? Um, coming to the show, I, I trained so hard. Um, uh, yeah, I didn't put on the muscle that I wanted to put on because of COVID, and then, you know I'm not a big eater anyway. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't really focus on putting on size. I'll focus on coming in condition. And uh, I was trying to bring it down some more. I was trying to come in a little smaller than what I usually mm -hmm. do. But my biggest thing, man, I was like, man, it was always knocking me saying I need to be tighter. I need to be a little bit more conditioned. Like, I've been hearing that for years. Like, man. all my shows, like, it was, even when I won overalls, it was like, basically you won because you have a look, because you look good. But mm -hmm. you can come in tighter and you can come in leaner. So I basically wanted to come in tighter and leaner and give the judges a different look. Cause they used to not see me coming in even tighter and leaner. So Yeah. How did you um so you mentioned that you're not a big eater, but you needed to come in tighter. Like what was the like what was the what was holding you back, I guess I should say, from getting about, tighter? About me yeah. Talking about me eating. Well, like what what was holding you back from coming in tighter? Because I would think if you had, you know, you weren't a big eater. I don't, I don't, I don't. I really don't know, man, because, like, I train hard, and sometimes mm -hmm. I, I kill cardio. I do everything I'm supposed to do, but it just, my body holds a lot of fluid, mm -hmm. holds a lot of water. Like, sometimes I can be backstage, I can be looking good, and then when we get close to time to going on, then it's like everything just go away for some reason. I don't know. I think it's like my stress level or something. I don't know. Yeah, but, so, so what you're saying is sometimes it's like a more of a peak thing than, like, a, yeah, like a prep yeah. thing. Uh huh. So I probably get up early that morning, or I might. Let's say we got to step on stage at eight o'clock, right? Mm -hmm. I might get up at like one or two that morning. I'm already like I'm ready to step on stage or something like that. Uh, gotcha. And by the time I come from to step on stage, it just like it kind of fades a little bit, you know. Yeah. Or sometimes, yeah. sometimes like one or two in the morning when I get up, I might not look like nothing until I'm backstage pumping up. Mm -hmm. My body mm -hmm. come alive, but when I'm back there posing, I get on stage and start posing, then I start getting to it but yeah yeah, yeah my whole thing was just come in tighter and uh give the judges something different so did you so like when you were coming like so when you were on stage did you like i know you said you you know you wanted to come in tighter did you feel like you accomplished like how like what you wanted to do i know you won the overall and everything did you come in with the look that you wanted Oh yeah, I knew I was man. Uh -huh. I, man, you couldn't deny me that I'm gonna come in where the where the, uh, the the judges wanted me to come in. I knew I was gonna come in what four or five pounds lighter. I knew I was gonna come mm -hmm. in straight. I knew my group was gonna be in. I knew I was gonna be on point because I really bust my tail. Like when I was in the gym training, right? I always felt like I wasn't doing enough. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I look up, I'm in the gym like four or five hours because like dang, I ain't doing enough of cardio. And I done an hour of cardio, then I gotta hit some more sets. And I look up, I'm done two hours of cardio. I'm like overtraining and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, I knew I came in on point right, when it comes. Right. I, knew, I knew I nailed it. It wasn't no denying that. Yeah, so you, you know you outworked everybody. There's no way that yeah, they can keep yeah, up with you. Yeah. yeah. I was straight tunnel vision. You couldn't tell me nothing. I was I was here locked all the way. In. I'm always mm -hmm. locked in, but it was just I just felt like I wasn't doing enough. Yeah, yeah. That's I'm I'm about to. Uh, I was gonna screen share here, pull up some. So I I saw this Instagram post. I commented on it. One second. This is the actual the shots from the show. But let me see. Um, where's the post that you made? Okay, this one right here where you showed like what was it 2021. And then uh -huh. this year's right, like you can okay. see a super diff can, significant difference. Yeah, I can break it down to you. The one on the left from last year on stage, I was probably about like two thirty three, two thirty two or something like that on stage. Mm -hmm. No, I weighed in at two twenty five, but my body, man, it goes to some 
crazy stuff when I stopped putting the food in. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I was 30 something on, on the left. But the right on stage, I probably like 226. Yeah, mm-hmm. two twenty six on the right. So you see the difference, right? Like a lot leaner, a lot tighter. I mean, I can definitely. I tell you where I see it the most is in your legs, like the legs. Oh yeah, you can really but, see the difference. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, like, I kind of I know that I was like I was losing my legs, but my coach he was telling me, "Don't worry about it, man. We're gonna have time to put the size on when it's needed." Yeah, like the size, like I lost so much like in the legs and other parts, but he was just so like, man, we're just going to come in shredded and lean. Yeah. Don't worry about the size and legs and all this and that, but we're going to bring it back. So Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of these the, shows are... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, to be a heavyweight, man, you got to be shredded, man. It's like the supers, they, you know, they get away with a little bit, you know, but the heavyweights, these guys have muscle and they be shredded. Right. And yeah. they have and they have the steadies and nice lines. So it's like I'm actually a super, but it just I can sink it all the way down to a heavy. So, so what's struggle, what's the line? What's the weight difference like between a super and um and heavyweight? What's the uh the top off for a heavyweight is like two twenty five. Uh, two twenty. And then with two twenty five, a super. Got it. Got it. So yeah. Well, so see nice all, all these shows are one on conditioning. You know, it's like I mean, it's like if you're not oh, conditioned. Yeah. It's hard to win a show, you know. But hard for judges mm-hmm. to give it to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to yeah. be conditioned, man. And everybody comes as a superman. I mean, everybody comes as a heavyweight. You got to be shredded and yeah. with, with the muscle. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. I mean that that says something about like you winning the overall. Oh, you know the supers and the heavyweights. I mean, like you came in with the condition and the size, and so like the judges obviously saw it. You know, but it's yeah. clear. Like the I, like I I was going through some of these pictures just prepping for our, our you know our uh, podcast together, and I mean just these shots are like your legs look good here. See, I rather. You just from my point of view, I rather you come down a little bit of size and mm-hmm. and have the the unreal like conditioning of lines and tie ins than yeah. like have a lot of size but n- nothing popping, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, see that's yeah those are those are good shots right there. Did they give you any kind of feedback as far as like for the pros? Like, do you have um, do you have like something that you're going to be working on? You no, know? I, didn't even, I didn't even ask for feedback, but I already know. What, what <laughs> you are you gonna? Look, but just think about it though. Just by looking at these pictures, mm-hmm. like what two twenty six right here, to be on that pro stage, I'm like what five ten. Mm-hmm. So be on that pro stage, I can't come in like this now. You already know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't yeah, looking like that. I gotta have at least 20, 25 more pounds put on. So yeah. Definitely I wanna get my legs back. I wanna bring my legs back up and once I get my legs back up, everything else is gonna grow. Right. So you so you're coming in in the two twenties range here, right? You said have you Yeah, I was like two twenty on this one, I was like two twenty four, two twenty five when I weighed in. Have you thought about like possibly sucking down to to do two twelves, or you think you're just gonna go straight open? Oh no, I've been adding on so much of muscle. Uh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I've been on. I it, it killed me getting down this low. Yeah, yeah. No, I understand. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting because it's like especially uh, you know with the whole there's a whole lot of conversation going on now about two twelves now that you know with the Olympia and Derek Lunsford you know coming in second. Um, you know, everybody's like, why do I even have the two twelves if you know yeah. these guys are just as good, they can compete with the opens, you know? Yeah, yeah, they can. But the thing is, I think two twelve would be too low for me because I'm five ten. So it's uh-huh. like these guys are like five, 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 six. You tall, you can if you at two twelve and you like five, six, that's considered that's considered tall. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. Met, met, imagine somebody on the stage at five ten and two twelve. Yeah. You know, that's that's they're gonna look stringy against the guys that's shorter. You yeah, know? yeah. What did you think about the Olympia? Did you get a chance to catch it? Like did you see some of the guys? Olymp- yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh Hadi, man, he, he deserved it. Like Hadi has it all. Mm-hmm. He has it all. Um I was shocked that uh, Nick Walker made the place he's gonna uh place, but he looked good. Mm-hmm. But I'm more like more of a aesthetic type guy. Yeah, yeah. But you no, know, Nick Walker he badass, but like everybody loves Nick Walker. But yeah, um, 
I just wonder, like, how is he going to compete against, like, in the future? Like, I, I, I don't see how he would, who he would win because, like, he's massive, but like, can, he can't compete like with the with the structure and the lines and everything that mm-hmm. Hottie and and Derek, you know, bring in. It's, um, I, you know, he can do well, but I don't ever see him winning. You know, that's yeah, uh, he's, he's definitely going to come in condition. Yeah. So if he wins, it's gonna have to be somebody that's coming a little off. But Nick yeah. all gonna come in on point. Yeah. You know, and I think he, I think he was a little lighter this time around. I think he was a little smaller this time around. Yeah, he was. Some... He was like really well conditioned. Really well. Yeah, I, I mean, he all would be conditioned. He with Matt. Matt gonna get him right. Yeah. I mean, he got. You know. I mean, we're talking about him like. You know, like he's he's gotten third place. So like you know, there's only two guys above him. Like so, it's like yeah. he's pretty you know, darn close, you know, to, yeah. to being the champ. So that, I mean, he got a great placing. The, the one that I, like, I was surprised about a couple of people. I was surprised. Well, obviously like Rami dropping so far back. Um, I think it was a good placing like to put him that far back. I'm just, he just didn't look right. Man. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Like, I don't get it. His quad. He has some stuff going on his quad. He has some bad injection. He looked, yeah. even uh, Nick kind of looked a little bit like that too, but uh, Rami is like, it's like a box, like mm-hmm. box, like boxy. I don't yeah. really. I'm not too good at hard boxy look. I'm more like the, the nice, uh, smooth lines and stuff like that. Small right. waist. I'm not too yeah. fan of like a box. Yeah, the the small waist really gives you like like I think they should reward people with small waists because mm-hmm. I mean I understand it's a muscle show. I know I understand it's like the you know the bigger you are, like the better it is, but. At, at some level, you got to kind of judge everything, right? So it's like you can't, you know, if your waist is growing with everything else, it's like, you know, you're kind of blowing out your your shape. You know, it doesn't mm-hmm. doesn't look Man, right. That's like, you know, uh, insulin and all that, then heavy deadlifts. And- yeah. yeah. <laughs> how do you how do you train like when pre- prepping for your shows, or how did you train for the for this NPC Nationals? Man, to be honest with you, like I had lost so much of strength, like. When I had caught the COVID, mm. uh, I got all the way down to like two fifteen when I caught COVID. Like I wasn't eating nothing like that. So when I got healed or from the COVID, I started eating a little bit, but my strength was like all loaded. I was feeling like kind of like like my muscle was feeling off balance, like kind of jittery a little bit. When I lift, like I was like shaky. Mm-hmm. So man, I was only squatting like I was struggling with two twenty five. I was struggling with one eighty five on bench. I didn't have my strength, and then I kind of gradually started getting back stronger. Mm-hmm. So I had to figure out a way to train to, you know, look like something. So what I did was I counted my uh, my sets. I never count my reps. So each set was to failure. But it was at a weight that was not so heavy to where I have to, like, muscle it. Mm-hmm. But it was at a weight that was heavy for I can dig deep and get it all my max reps out. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, So yeah. Yeah. it was all about putting crazy blood in the muscle. So I was all about trying to chase the pump the whole yeah. time. Chase the pump. Yeah, it's it's interesting that you say that because, like, there's some people that will, you know, work, like, will speak against that, you know, against the, the more volume, against the, yeah, I the chasing the right. pump. But, yeah, because the thing is, like, I couldn't lift the heavy weight. Like, I used to get up on the squats. Like, I will get on the squats. It just felt so heavy. My knees, like, everything was aching. Even to, still to this day right now. Okay, I'm getting all little bit off the subject. But right no, now. No, no, you're I'm fine. Trying, we got time. Right now, what I'm trying to do is I have to put size on, right? Step on mm-hmm. the stage. So, I know I need to eat more and push a little bit more heavier weight. So, right now, I'm trying to start over from the basics. Like, you're basically like, like squats, mm-hmm. uh, bench, and stuff like that. And the uh, dumbbell bench and stuff. I did trying to get my strength back in my upper body and legs because the whole prep, man, it was just high intensity, like crazy reps and stuff like that. Because I wasn't able to push the weight that I wanted to. Because I just, man. like, I was hurting. Like, I get on the bench, I was feeling lopsided. Um, my chest mm-hmm. and everything was hurting, knees and everything. So I just had to figure out a certain way. So now I'm starting off from the base and trying to get that strength back in the legs and upper body. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. A lot of times like people will like if they, you know, go through something like that, like COVID or something and or they don't train for a little while, they'll lose their strength. And then mm-hmm. they'll, they'll, they'll try to they'll try to go back to like doing the same things. And it's like that's a good way to get hurt. Like you don't want to you know, you don't want to go down that route. You want to kind of start, like you said, from the building blocks. 
early yeah. on. Yeah, it's so crazy. My strength, like, okay, we had our show December the third, right? So I was what two twenty five, two twenty six, two twenty five, right there. So now I'm at two fifty five right now, and my strength is like jumping up like crazy now. It's yeah. like it's shocking. It's like now, point like now, I have to back out. I have to back off. Mm-hmm. And last night I did bench. I never do free weight bench. I just started by doing it to try to get the strength back. I had three fifteen on there. I did like twenty five times. It's out of nowhere, That's, but I did yeah. have a big build too. So. And it kind of scared me a little bit because I wasn't hurting. I was feeling uh, good. But I know next time I go back and jump, I'm probably going to be hurting. Right now, I'm, I'm crazy. So, like, my recovery is, is terrible right now, too. Okay. Yeah. I'm all in here after that. But, yeah. But I had to figure out other ways to train. But my strength is definitely getting back up there. I think yeah. because my body weight is going up, too. So. Yeah. I mean, like, it probably has something to do with your body weight, um, you know, and that kind of like that rebound after the show and everything like that. How did you look? So you had COVID. When did you have it? Did you have it mid prep or before you started your prep? Before I started my prep. So I had got COVID uh, maybe eight weeks before my prep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I didn't start my prep until uh, 16 weeks out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, 16 weeks out, that's when I start running, like, all my different stuff, like, supplements and everything I need. Because mm-hmm. you on COVID, then you go through that transition, like, you don't want to be taking certain stuff and you're trying to heal and all that. So Right, right. Getting into the groove until I was, like, 16 weeks out with everything. Well, and plus, you probably won't even get the full benefits of everything that you're taking because mm-hmm. you're, you're not even I, trained. Man, your body going through so much of the yeah. chain with the COVID, man. That COVID, is, it hit me bad. It hit yeah. me real bad. It, it, it hit the actual... The muscle, you see what I'm mm-hmm, saying? Like mm-hmm. it does not to muscles, man. It just it, it broke them down. Yeah. Did your did your wife or anybody in your family get it as yeah, well? They caught it. My little baby caught it. She had a high oh, fever. Did sad. something. So we all had it at the same time, and that yeah. was the toughest part because I'm weak feeling. I'm drained, weak, and my baby crying, and I'm trying to get my wife. She feeling weak and tired. So we just, it was tough. It was really yeah. rough. Yeah. Oh, well, you made it. You made it out. You got yeah. got the training. Got got what you needed. Got the physique that you needed. Won the show. Won the overall. Yeah. I mean, that's a big deal. That's a big yeah. deal. So, do you have a um, like, are you gonna take the entire year next year, like in the off season, to grow? Or are you are you thinking you've got something in mind already for a show? Uh, my wife says she should man, just keep going, like do a show like the next five six months because mm-hmm. you got this buzz. You know, people that follow you and um, tune into. Right, you know, yeah, they probably want to see how you look on the on the big level with the yeah. big guys. The thing about it, you you've been following a guy. He just won his pro card, but he was always so close. And then also, you see him on the, on the big stage. Like I want to compare him against these other guys who he look like. And then you see him like, oh man, he's holding his own. He's looking good. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But the yeah. thing is, it's very expensive too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got a family, my wife, and all this and that. It's different if I had sponsors or something like that, but I'm going to figure something out, probably work some extra overtime, put some money back and see and start a prep. But yeah, it's yeah. very, very expensive, very expensive. Well, see, like the bodybuilding, it's, uh, you know, it's such a, it's so different from like any other sport because it's like when you turn pro in other sports, you know, people pay you like, but. <laughs> man, <ahead>. look, <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say, man, I was thinking. That was before I, you know, been around, been around it for me. I was thinking, man, as soon as you get your pro card, you're gonna get sponsors. I'm set. No, it's it's guys that's pro pro bodybuilders and they're broke. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They don't win no shows and nothing like that. Yeah, no for sure, for sure. Well, it's, it's only just, like the only like f- the few at the very top, you know, like that are yeah. that are getting all that. So. Yeah. So yeah, I had to I had to work some overtime. I might have to do some Ubering or something like that. Set some money back. I'm for real. I have to. Yeah, man, yeah. No, I get it. I get it. You look at you man. You looking at probably on the prep, and then with the traveling and all that. You are gonna probably spend about six, seven thousand dollars. Yeah, I remember I was talking to a guy. Like I live in Nashville, uh, Tennessee, and we we there was a guy in my gym and he turned pro um, kind of later on in his years. And he was talking to me and at, at the same time, like Kai green came out with like some kind of article or something. And he was saying that like his prep was like around 30 grand, like Kai green's prep. And yeah. at the time, at the time he was competing and the guy, the guy I was talking to, he's like, do you know what I could do with 30 grand? It's like, this guy is spending 30 grand on prep. I'm like, that's wild. Yeah. You know, this wild amount of money. 
So yeah, man. I love it, man. I just like train hard and eat and travel with this bodybuilding thing and get paid for it. But it's like it's like I have to work, man, to defeat this lifestyle and take care of my family. So, right. Right. Well, you got, I mean, you got your priorities, you know, that's, yeah. that, that's the most important thing, but it does show that how much you love the sport that you're willing to, you know, like it's like based on people like you is how the sport like keeps going because, you know, if it wasn't people like you that, you know, we wouldn't have like new pros. We wouldn't have like people to mm -hmm. talk to, you know? Uh, and so, I mean, if it was, if it was left just to the people at the top, like, there wouldn't be even that many shows, you know, because those guys only compete like once a year, you know. So uh -huh. anyway, yeah. So yeah, but I mean, it was times I was uh, working like 10, 12 hour shifts and stuff. I was working in the plant, and then getting off and going training, then getting back up early to do cardio to eat. It was at one point I wasn't even seeing my wife. Mm. On I was That's like, hot. we real with each other at all. Like, I had to go to work 10, 12 hours. I probably go pull over some work because I've been a fellow asleep on, on the on the road. I had to pull over and take a nap if I go into the gym. Yeah, um, that's unreal. I, one yeah. time I was uh, I fell asleep on the road. I woke up. I was doing donuts in the media, in the grass. I'm talking about hitting donuts. And that time I fell off and went to sleep. Uh, I would do 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 do. And I woke up, and then I was hitting on the guardrail and water and stuff splashing all up on the window. I messed like two or three cars up falling asleep. You're yeah. for you're fortunate to be alive, man. That could you know that could have ended badly. Yeah, man, chasing his bodybuilding dream, man. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. And trying to work to to, to feed it, so right. you know, it yeah. was tough. Definitely for the love of the sport, that's for sure. You can nobody yeah. can say that. You know, it's uh, it's like nobody in bodybuilding is in it for the money. Usually, that's not how it starts nah. off. No, nah, but after a while, you don't know have to get to a point. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta pay some duckies now. That's oh, true. <laughs> hey, uh, did you? Um, so how did I was gonna ask you? How did you get into like training and working out and stuff? Did you always want to be a bodybuilder? Yeah, you no. Know, my my background is football and um, track. Okay. Um. Uh, take it on back to when I was younger. Uh, I got into like training hard with my dad because I was playing football. I saw mm -hmm. you look hurt, hurt and stuff like that. So yeah. We got into the gym when I was 12, but we used to train hard for five days a week because he got tired of me getting hurt and stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, it just took off from there. Um, played high school football, mm -hmm. went to college, played there, and I uh, got down there. I uh, did a couple of NFL trials, I was in a couple of camps, and then I went to Las Vegas. I played uh, an NRFL reality football league, like mm -hmm. development for the NFL. Yeah. I played there and then. I was 28 then, when I, around 27, 28 when I came home. Mm -hmm. And I had to hand the so it was no more football. Had to get that to that regular life then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That and that's. I mean, you were pretty up there as far as like football is concerned. When you mm -hmm. trying out for, you know, trying out for NFL teams and you know playing like yeah. that, that's, you know, you went pretty far with that. Most people don't go that far, you know. For most yeah, people, man, my, wins. yeah, my whole life was like like everybody in my family thought I was gonna make it to the NFL. Yeah, and so my whole life was just school and football. I didn't have my first job until I was twenty eight. Yeah, so I got football. Yeah, and I hated it, man. I was sort of depressed, man, because you got to think about it, like my whole life was just school and football. So it's like you, in your mind, like that won't be in the league and all this mm -hmm. and that. But you get done, man. You hit the real world. You start working. You're like, whoa, you know. what yeah. I'm saying I'm not used to that. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm used to being in five like smart touchdowns and. Have little interviews about what's next, you know. Right. But now I'm working a job making thirteen, twelve dollars an hour, you know. Yeah. So yeah. it was tough, very stressful, man. Stressful. Yeah. Um, very humbling. It, it was definitely humbling. I was already humble, but it would stretch you. It would set you straight for yeah. real. When you yeah. here with a certain sport, and then it's like, it's no more. They send you home, and then it's like you got to hit the real world. It's like, oh, yeah. It's a shocker. I mean that's how it is because it's like a lot of times like athletes or especially like high level athletes, they'll always talk about how difficult like it is. And no doubt it's like just the sport itself, whatever sport you're involved in at high level can be difficult. I'm not saying that it's not, but mm -hmm. you know, but regular life and just trying to feed your family and just trying to work is also very difficult, you know, especially in the world that we live in, you know? 
man, I always say it, man. Life is hard and life is difficult. It's meant to be that way. Life is meant to be hard and tragic and everything bad about it. Life is meant to be that way. So a lot of times we have to have in our mind to take the punches and just roll with it. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, if you just dwell on all the bad that's going on in the world and in life, you will you will you will window away. Like you'll mentally be messed up. So yeah. let's try to mentally messed up. That's just okay. This and this happened. This and his jumped off of my, my life. This door here was closed on me. Uh no opportunities done. Like I'm making this, I'm making that, it ain't nothing working out. We keep pushing. We keep pushing. Yeah. That's the way it's supposed to be. We can't help that, you know. Yeah. A lot of people like nowadays are like mentally there, you know, it's just it's difficult for them. Things are you know, things are tough. Like, in, and you know what, what I, what I see more and more is like young, like young guys too, like guys that are like mm -hmm. in their twenties, they're already having like, like they can't handle just normal life. Like, and you know, it's a, uh, it's a lot, a lot of pressure on them at young ages, but I also feel like, like you said, like they don't know how to, how to roll like with, pun you know, with the punches. Yeah, I don't know. But right it's a, it's like a mental strength thing like they, they're they lacking like mental strength you know and yeah. so so they end up getting depressed and then it leads you know leads to everything else so yeah you know i'm depressed man it's just like it's just the way it's supposed to be that is life man so anything right. is things gonna happen it's supposed to you know yeah. everything's supposed to happen all that's supposed to happen so it's just like I'm not going to sit here and just shrivel up on it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it definitely makes you tougher. And it's like, what's the other, like, what's the other option? You know, the other option is you just give up and, then, you know. Figure out, some, figure out another avenue. Figure out something else. Keep your head straight. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. That's how it is, man. That's how it is. So, you know, now, now you're kind of like, you, you know, you got your pro card, you know, you're, you're getting ready. Um, You know, you're probably thinking about doing another, um, mm -hmm. another show are you like are you gonna try to like use this to try to maybe like train other people or you think you're you're probably just gonna stick to the to the competing aspect of it for now um i would love to man i'm like i i feel good um pushing people and motivating people to be the best version of themselves not even mm -hmm. just for bodybuilding and working out it's just mm -hmm. like if i post a video or something like that and it helps somebody spiritually or mentally to keep striving and doing whatever it is they try to do if it's trying to get a degree or open up a business or something like that right right yeah and yeah. that's a good at because sometimes like we don't know our purpose here on on this earth and mm -hmm. i feel as though that's truly my purpose is helping people to uh mental wise and helping people to be the best version of themselves yeah through all action so that's why Anything I say or do, I try to like think about like what if somebody's looking at this and I'm out here acting ignorant or saying some crazy <laughs> weird, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's, and that's not what I'm about. I'm about pushing people to be the best version of themselves. So I gotta put out the best version of myself. So yeah. Right. And that's like that's that's you gotta like such a good like good mental outlook because a lot of people out here are, you know, saying crazy things, like doing mm -hmm. crazy things. It's like, and I always wonder, I'm like, you know, like somebody is like, especially nowadays with everything being online, you know, s somebody is looking at this, like, or in the future, somebody's going to see this, you know, or you've got a daughter, or they've got kids. It's like, they're going to see that, you know, how are you going to come off? How are you going to look, you know? And I, and I think about somebody like, um, like a Chris, you know, Bumstead who represents himself very well, right? Like, look, look at how popular he is. And he doesn't say yeah. anything crazy. He doesn't act crazy. Like, he doesn't do anything crazy. You know, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I said, definitely. I'm agreeing. Yeah. Most definitely. Most definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, uh, it was a weird thing. Like I had a experience just recently. I was talking to this, um, so I, a buddy of mine, uh, posted, uh, uh, like a sh like a flexing photo or flexing uh, video with another guy who was a power lifter. And I believe his name is Shane or something like that. And he was, uh, you know, he looked good. He was, uh, I, I redid some research on him. Like he, you know, he looked like, you know, what he was doing. I was like, Hey, I don't have a lot of power lifters on the show. I'm going to invite the guy. So, you know, I reach out to him and guy goes like bonkers. And I'm like, I, I, I was so confused, man. I was like, I didn't know what was going on. I never had that kind of reaction. He's like, 
using all this profanity with me and everything. And I'm like, dude, you're not interested. No big deal. And then, and then, you know, like I started thinking to myself, I'm like, what if this guy, and he's a fairly young kid. I'm like, what if he's like, has some kind of mental issues or some kind of, you know, struggling with something. It's like, I don't want to, I don't want to antagonize him and like, yeah. you know, and, and find out like, you know, he, like he did, did, did something to himself or somebody else. I was like, you know, I mean, no big deal. Just let it go. Cause it's yeah. like now, nowadays, everybody's struggling with all these mental problems, you know? So yeah. it's just That's a big thing. Building is very big. Yeah. But, yeah. but hey, to be honest with you, I think everybody, we all have some type of mental thing going on with us, even though you may not think so. Mm -hmm. We all have something going on with us. It, some might be greater than the other or something like that. We all have sure. something. That because we what we live in, this thing we call life, right? Right. Life is hard. So we all have, have this certain things that are going on with us mentally. Yeah. Everybody do. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I completely agree with you. Yeah. Like you said, it's it varies, right? Some people got it worse. Some people got it, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit better. But but yeah, everybody's dealing with something, right? So. Yeah, for sure. Well, hey, man, I, I really appreciate uh, Walter your time. I know you got a you got a family, you got a young child that you're taking care of. So I thank you for your time. I was gonna ask you if somebody wanted to reach out to you um, for like more podcasts or like training questions or coaching. Like, how would be the best way to, for them to contact you? Oh, Silverback underscore Dev on my Instagram. My wife okay. she she makes sure everything you know handled okay. with that. Awesome. That's I'm not it. all that stuff, man. I'd be so. <laughs> other stuff i go on there sometime and you know interact with some people but she just she monitor it and she makes sure like i get back with people or she got it know. got it that's a good wife you got a good one there yeah. for sure <laughs> <laughs> and uh, guys i'm gonna link everything at the bottom just to make it easier for you to reach uh to reach walter uh for more collabing and stuff like that so again walter thank you so much you have a good rest of the day thanks man god bless you bro all right, all right man take care